The year 1967 marked a significant moment in Tanzanian history with the discovery of a rare and precious mineral called tanzanite. Known as the generational gemstone, tanzanite is predicted to be fully mined within a single generation. Its only world locality, the mining area of Mirrani, is located in northern Tanzania. Despite being the only place in the world where this gemstone is found, Tanzania misses out on the advantages of tanzanite mining and is not even among the top exporters of tanzanite. The country suffers billions of dollars in losses due to smuggling and illegal trade. In this video, we will examine complex relations between various actors in tanzanite market. What role have countries like India and China and how the tragic New York terrorist attack affected the trade and demand for this precious stone. Join us as we answer important questions about tanzanite. Is it a good investment? What does the future hold for tanzanite mining? Prepare for an exciting journey as we uncover the fascinating story of tanzanite. Let's start by learning more about this beautiful gemstone. This mineral is a variety of zoisite. Its unique color is attributed to trace amounts of vanadium. Tanzanite is used in the jewelry industry, primarily for faceted gemstones and competes with sapphire, emerald, ruby, and diamond. Estimates suggest that tanzanite reserves could be completely depleted within the next 20 years, possibly even sooner. The shortest estimates indicate 13 years, but the majority fall within the range of 20 to 25 years. Crystals of tanzanite are classified into three color categories, blue, Asali, honey color, and vupa, bone color. This classification is also reflected in the prices, with blue being the most valuable. To achieve a vivid blue color, tanzanite crystals are often heated at temperatures ranging from 400 to 500 Celsius. This process creates or enhances a dark blue color, even in samples that originally had a brown or light gray hue. One of the most interesting properties of tanzanite is its strong pleochroism, found especially in non-heated crystals. Different colors are observed when polarized light passes through the material in different directions. In practice, this means that tanzanite, when exposed to polarized light, such as a phone display or computer monitor, displays different hues, such as red, pink, green, brown, and dark, or light blue, or even orange. Now, let's explore Tanzanite's only world locality, Mererani, a small mining town in northern Tanzania, near the majestic Mount Kilimanjaro. Mererani is a bustling town approximately 70 kilometers from the border with Kenya. This place is exclusively focused on the extraction of Tanzanite. Its streets are bustling with trucks, motorcycles, and other vehicles. Symbols of wealth are visible on every corner, including modern hotel complexes and bars that operate until the early morning. These establishments have been built by mining barons, wealthy traders, or mine owners to influence their surroundings. The mining industry in Mererani plays a vital role in the local community, employing the majority of its residents. The exact number of miners is unknown, probably exceeds 70,000. In addition to tanzanite, the Mererani area is known to contain various other minerals, such as pyrite, graphite, savorite, diopside, and prehnite. The mining area in Mererani has been divided into four blocks, A, B, C, and D. Block C, considered the largest and most productive, is estimated to hold up to two-thirds of the tanzanite reserves. In fact, it is larger than all the other blocks combined. Significant mining activities also take place in Block D. In 2017 began the construction of a wall around the entire Tanzanite mining area in order to reduce smuggling. Vehicles are prohibited from entering or leaving the area, so miners often use one car in the area and other in outside world. Individuals leaving the area are thoroughly searched by military personnel. Despite some shortcomings, the wall is reported to have positive impacts on the local community. It has effectively eradicated child labor in Mirani and improved overall safety while reducing criminal activities. There are two main actors inside the walled area forming a complex relations, large-scale miners, LSM, and artisanal and small-scale miners, ASM. ASM can be defined as operations with low capital investments in technological levels. 
full ownership of local citizens, and are smaller in scale. ASM plays a significant role in Mirarani, as well as throughout all Africa. A significant portion of their activity takes place in Block D, which was licensed to 368 entities. The decreasing availability of tanzanite has led to mining taking place at as deep as 800 meters underground. Therefore, more sophisticated techniques are required. This sets ASM in Merirani apart from other areas in the world, as higher operating expenses are needed. Mines in Merirani can operate for months without encountering a tanzanite deposit. Most ASM operations have several paid positions, including a geologist, an electrician, and an explosive specialist. But miners are usually hired on a casual basis. Instead of a regular salary, they receive only food, medical expenses, and basic accommodation. They can work like this for months until the mine produces tanzanite, from which they then receive a share. Some miners prefer this system over a steady salary because it offers the possibility of suddenly earning a large amount of money. On the other hand, other miners would like to work for LSM, primarily due to the guaranteed salary and safer conditions in the mines. Now, let's look at LSM. Currently, large-scale mining in Merirani involves major companies like Tanzanite One and less active Kilimanjaro mines and Tanzanite Africa. These companies own the majority of the land, around 90% in the Simanjiro district. However, only about 9% of the area falls under 1,813 ASM entities, highlighting the contrast between LSM and ASM. As previously mentioned, Block C is the biggest and most significant one. In 1998, this block was bought from Inefficient Grafton, limited by a South African company, African Gem Resources, also known as Afgem. Later on, Afgem was sold and renamed as Tanzanite One. LSM companies also focus on Corporate Social Responsibility, CSR. AFGIM invested over 360,000 U.S. dollars in development projects, benefiting the local community through initiatives such as building schools and infrastructure. Tanzanite One has donated over 1,000 U.S. dollars to a local orphanage. Additionally, Tanzanite One launched an initiative called Tanzanite Experience, which provides local Maasai women the necessary materials and training to create jewelry. The boundaries between LSM and ASM became a challenge over time, and the relationship between these two actors is marked by numerous challenges and conflicts, leading to shooting 11 ASM miners in a recent history. Additionally, between 2000 and 2003, seven incidents were reported where ASM miners were attacked by dogs or shot by AFGIM security guards. All of these cases were taken to court, but none was resolved. Miners particularly young men, face hazardous working conditions, including cramped adits, outdated equipment, and a lack of safety measures. They put their lives at risk in a hunt of tanzanite. A significant issue for miners is the permanent dust pollution that occurs during mining operations. Inadequate ventilation and the presence of noxious gases after blasting is leading to the accumulation of toxic particles. Studies conducted in Mirarani mines have shown high levels of harmful substances, such as silicon and graphite. Excessive exposure to such dust can result in serious health issues, including lung cancer and chronic silicosis. Mining-related accidents claim many lives in Mirarani. In 2002 alone, over 39 people died from suffocation following blasts and between 1996 and 2000, a total of 86 fatalities occurred in blocks B and D. Floods have also caused significant fatalities in the past, killing over 100 per year. These accidents are often attributed to poor mining planning, inadequate safety measures, and the lack of qualified personnel. Unfortunately, fatal accidents persist today and are not limited to the past. Moreover, Child labor was a significant concern in the past, exposing young miners to risks as they would stay underground during blasts in hopes of being the first to obtain newly exposed tanzanite. The UN produced a short film titled Gem Slaves, tanzanite's child labor highlighting this issue, revealing that up to 4,000 children worked in Mirarani on a daily basis. Luckily, this issue has been resolved with the construction of the wall around the tanzanite mines. Now, let's move to the international sphere and explore the tanzanite smuggling problem. 
The Tanzanite trade has not realized its potential for Tanzania. The country receives only a small percentage of global Tanzanite trade revenues. From 1998 to 2017, Tanzania earned just 5.2% of the total global trade value, amounting to 172 million US dollars. In contrast, India, followed by Kenya, has emerged as the largest exporter of Tanzanite. According to some sources, India received up to 83% of Tanzanite production per year. The processing of Tanzanite in India has created a significant number of jobs, surpassing the employment opportunities generated in Tanzania. Jaipur, the bustling city in India, serves as the primary cutting center for Tanzanite. According to various sources, Tanzanite cutting in Jaipur has created an impressive 250,000 job opportunities, far surpassing the number of cutting positions available in Tanzania. In there, the Tanzanite cutting sector employs just over 100 individuals. It is important to mention that cut gemstones might have even 100 time higher price than raw. Determining the extent of the Tanzanite trade conducted under the radar is a challenging task. Tanzanites are smuggled out of Tanzania without official documentation, often through routes via neighboring Kenya. Some ASM miners have established trade relationships with merchants in Nairobi. These traders in return purchase raw Tanzanite from them and offer a permanent cooperation. Chinese dealers have been playing an increasingly prominent role in recent times. The influence of Chinese demand on the market can be illustrated by the Hong Kong Trade Fair in 2010, organized to promote Tanzanite. Following the fair, there was a significant surge in demand for this precious gemstone. The number of Chinese involved in the jewelry industry has increased from a mere 20,000 in 1980 to over 3 million 30 years later. In 2013, major Chinese jewelry company signed an agreement with Tanzanite One owners for the sale of Tanzanite to China. The gemstone is sold in offices in the city of Arusha and then travels to cutting facilities exclusively located in India. From there, processed Tanzanite is heading to China. A large portion of Tanzanian society, including the ASM community, feels neglected by the government. Local residents perceive a failure of the government to address their living conditions. There is also a lack of trust in the police force and a prevailing sense of criminality in Mehrani. These factors may contribute to why the ASM sector prefers to bypass the Tanzanian government and collaborate with foreign entities instead of benefiting the country under different circumstances. Finances are invested in boycotting the government. An example of this is when ASM miners deliberately sabotaged AppGem's activities to drive the company out of the country. One of the sponsors of such actions was an Indian trader who invested up to 250,000 US dollars for this purpose. These money were used for buying journalists or even a bomb, which was used against Apshem in 2001. The Deputy Minister of Energy and Minerals declared, local dishonest traders conspired with foreigners to smuggle massive amounts of raw gemstones. It is evident that the government is aware of this situation, but does not focus on the underlying causes. The lack of control corruption, and inadequate capacity for processing within Tanzania have contributed to smuggling. In an attempt to increase the value added within the country, Tanzania has initiated cutting training programs, but mastering the art of gemstone cutting takes years of experience. In October 2018, only 18 students were trained. The courses were just seven months long. Concerns also exist regarding the quality of cutting, as improper cutting could diminish the value of the gemstones. Despite these challenges, Tanzania revised its export regulations in 2019, allowing the export of raw tanzanite up to a weight of 2 grams. However, the majority of mined tanzanite is smaller than 1 gram, thus exempt from this regulation, which has not changed a lot. About 90% of mined tanzanite is leaving Tanzania in a raw form. Now, let's embark on a journey to uncover how events like September 11 attacks can influence the Tanzanite market. At the beginning of the 21st century, Tanzanite was identified as a conflict mineral. Following the September 11 attacks, the United States made efforts to cut off any sources of funding that could support Al-Qaeda. The terrorist organization sought alternative methods for money transfers, such as purchasing diamonds in Liberia and Sierra Leone. In November 2001, the Wall Street Journal of New York published an article titled Underground Trade, Much Smuggled Gem Called Tanzanite, Help Spin Laden Supporters. 
The idea for this article came from two journalists, Robert Block and Daniel Pearl. By the way, have you heard about the movie A Mighty Heart starring Angelina Jolie? This film is about the journalist Daniel Pearl and his murder in Pakistan in January 2002 while pursuing leads on Al-Qaeda financing. Back in 2001, Pearl and Block spoke with several individuals in Mir Rainey who confirmed that Tanzanite had been used to sponsor Al-Qaeda. One of the interviewees was an imam at a mosque in Mir Rainey who expressed sympathy for bin Laden. The United States represented 80% of the global Tanzanite market. And based on this article, jewelry companies such as Tiffany, Zale, and QVC ceased buying and selling the gemstone. The Tanzanite market experienced a 70% decline. Individuals affected by the events of September 11, based on the article, filed a lawsuit against STS Jewels, a major Tanzanite trader in New York and also against the Tanzanian Association of Mineral Dealers, seeking compensation of at least one billion U.S. dollars. The U.S. State Department conducted an investigation and concluded that there was no evidence linking the sale of Tanzanite itself to Al-Qaeda. However, it was proven that Al-Qaeda had been selling Tanzanite to finance its operations. In the same year, a meeting took place in Tucson, attended by a delegation from the Tanzanian government, jewelers, and traders from the United States, Germany, and Israel. Based on the outcomes of the negotiations, the Tucson Tanzanite Protocol was signed. Tucson Tanzanite Protocol can be compared to Kimberley Process. However, the Kimberley Process is largely based on an agreement between governments of different countries in order to reduce blood diamonds trading. Generally, both the Kimberley Process and the Tucson Protocol contribute to greater transparency and sustainability in the precious gem mining industry. According to official Kimberley Process data, 99.8% of blood diamonds are prevented from entering the market. It is much more effective than the Tucson Tanzanite Protocol, which has largely failed to prevent Tanzanite smuggling. So far, we have discussed the past, but what will the future look like? the ASM community will face new challenges. With current mining operations reaching depths of 800 meters, sophisticated techniques are required. Tanzanite is found at depths of up to 2,000 meters, making future mining even more technologically demanding and costly. Some believe that ASM mining in Mariani may decline within a few years due to a lack of modern equipment. To survive, the ASM sector must invest substantial amounts in new and suitable technology. While conflicts between ASM and LSM have recently subsided, the situation could become complicated again in the upcoming years. The decreasing supply of Tanzanite could lead to tension and competition between Tanzanite 1 and ASM, as well as increased international pressures. With fewer tanzanite reserve available, its popularity may wane, and alternative gemstones could fill the demand. Political stability in the country and the region also plays a crucial role. Any unrest could significantly drive up the price of tanzanite. Ensuring the future of tanzanite mining relies on avoiding deepening problems and hostile relationships among different stakeholders at local and political levels. It is crucial for the Tanzanian government to be aware of these risks and prepare a strategy for the best way forward. After everything, what have been said, is it worth investing in Tanzanite? Generally, investing in gemstones and minerals is riskier than some other investments, such as gold. Although there are a few other rare minerals with just one world locality, Tanzanite differs because of its use in the jewelry industry and attractive look. Also, the Tanzanite demand is high, thus easier to sell. When purchasing a cut gem, it is crucial to consider important factors such as hue, weight, inclusions, cut quality, and shape. Always, a recommendation of a specialist is recommended. However, there is also an option of investing to a raw crystal. Important factors influencing the price are color, clarity, and crystal size. It is advisable to buy crystal without inclusions as they can be used for cutting. The majority, 74.2%, of the mined tanzanite weighs less than 1 gram, while the range of 1 to 10 grams represents 25% of the discovered samples. Some sources even say 99.5% of all mined pieces is under 1 gram. That means that crystals over 10 grams are just a fraction, 0.0% of all mined tanzanite. 
out of this reason, it is wise to invest to the bigger pieces, preferably above 10 grams. Also, in the recent years, tanzanite deposits have become less accessible. This led to a reduction in the number of employees in Mirarani mines. According to a conducted research from 2019, ASM mines experience reductions of employers even up to 88% of their original capacity. Now, it seems as the best time to buy tanzanite, as in the future, less and less crystals could be available. It's important to remember that investing in tanzanite is a long-term venture. As one geologist who worked in Mererani wisely advised me, if you are looking to save money for retirement, investing in tanzanite crystals can be a worthwhile choice. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe for more interesting geological content in the future. Stay tuned for exciting updates.